Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. So Ireland are Six Nations Grand Slam champions. What a game of rugby between them and England. 29-16 it finished to Ireland. The Freddie Stewart red card, which caused a lot of controversy in the game. I'm going to get into all of that in this video, a look back on the Six Nations, a look ahead now to both where Ireland and England are going forward. But I absolutely loved that game. I thought it was brilliant. People say red cards ruin games. I didn't think that was the case at all. I thought it was still a sensational test match. So make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think about Ireland. Let me know what you think about England and their performance in particular. And let me know where you think these two teams are now heading into the World Cup in France later this year. So much to get into. So let's do just that. Let's get into it. So I feel like a lot of column inches, a lot of airtime is going to be eaten up by the Freddie Stewart red card. And as I said in the intro, I personally don't think it ruined this game. I think it was still a brilliant test match. I think people react in a certain way when there's red cards and say it's ruined the game. It completely changes the complexion of the contest, but I don't think it ruined the game at all. As for my own views, I saw on Twitter, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of current pros, a lot, a lot of ex-pros, and just a lot of fans in general saying that it was a disgraceful decision. I do think it was harsh. I think if you listen back to Jaco Piper's description of why he gave it, there is a semblance of common sense there in terms of head contacts being such a high point of contention. Then there's a lot of people that say it's a rugby incident. The reason I think it's harsh is because I think Freddie Stewart is acting in a certain way because he knows that the player is pretty much dead. The ball had just been knocked on. I think he turned his body because he didn't want to make a tackle when he knew that the play was going to be called back for a scrum. And I think he's just got it wrong, really. I think if you really analyse that moment, it, it doesn't really make sense how he's turned his body like that. I guess he's braced for contact. It doesn't look good when it's slow it down, when it's his elbow making contact with the head. But as I say, I think to have no mitigation in there, particularly the fact that the play was kind of over anyway, I thought was a little bit harsh. I'm not as outraged by it as I think a lot of people will be, as I think a lot of you probably will be in the comments. I have no doubt there will be plenty of you watching this saying, what are you on about? Of course, it was a terrible decision. I think I probably don't agree with it, but I'm not outraged by it. And also, I actually think if we get past the red card, there's still loads of us to analyse in this game and loads for us to get into because England were absolutely brilliant. England's game plan was superb. They tried to keep it tight. They tried to take the three points when it was on offer to them. And they had a huge emotional response to what was a pathetic performance against France, which is what I think we all called for. It's what it required and it was what was needed. So I do give England a lot of credit. I was critical of them last week, as most people were, understandably so. So England showed something. They showed a bit of fight. I think they showed a physicality in defence and a way of slowing that ball down, which did affect Ireland. But still, ultimately, they've come out on the wrong side of the result. But I do think it's positive for England. They had to show something and they did. But let's get on to Ireland um, because I think this Ireland team is brilliant. And I've been singing their praises on this channel throughout this Six Nations. I said I thought they would win the Six Nations. I said I thought they would win it easily. And I think overall they have done in the end, really. There hasn't been any game that has really been a nail biter in the end. I know it was kind of close against Scotland, but they pulled away in the second half. England caused them all sorts of problems, but they ended up pulling away with the man advantage or the two man advantage with the Jack Willis yellow card. And I just think Ireland at the moment have been brilliant. Having said that, I don't think they ex escape constructive criticism. Let me call it that. It's not out and out criticism, but after this game, particularly in that first half, I thought they looked rattled and I thought they looked like the pressure of the occasion was getting to them. I had a quick look at the stats just before I started to record this video. 18 handling errors from Ireland throughout the game. And you could kind of get a sense of that. Their attack just didn't kick into gear in the way that it does do normally. They were dropping balls, they were coughing it up, and it kind of played into England's hands. And I do think going forward, it's a, it's a learning curve for Ireland because actually, once again, they haven't necessarily played their best. And like all good sides, Ireland have been, a, have been able to get the victory and they deserve a huge amount of credit for that. But I just think heading into the World Cup later this year, I do think there will be teams, France in particular being one who I think would play in a similar way to which England did, but they have more firepower to back it up when they get those opportunities. There will be top teams in the world that will look at that. And I think they might just see a slight blueprint 
of how you can get an island, a very small chink in the armor, but that's, I'll leave that there in terms of my <laughs> constructive feedback, as I've called it, because I think this island team is brilliant. I think, as I say, once again, they were faced with adversity and they were able to get through it, as they have done throughout this Six Nations, like they did with the injuries they had in the game against Scotland, like they've done a number of other occasions in recent memories when they have had games where it hasn't all gone their own way. They've still found a way to win. They have players across the team full of quality. Most of all, of course, Johnny Sexton. And he's now the Six Nations all-time leading point scorer. We expect this will probably be his final ever performance in the Six Nations. And he will go out as one of the game's greats. He's crucial to this island side and he deserves the accolade and plaudits that will come his way after this result. As for England, I've got a few more points to say on them because it's very easy to get bogged down in the red card, as I kind of mentioned. And whilst England were great in a lot of areas and we had an improved performance that we hoped for, I'm still left frustrated in one regard in particular. And again, I was just looking at the stats of the game. If I just get them up again here. And they conceded 13 penalties, which isn't, it's not horrendous. But I thought there were a lot of sloppy penalties for England. I thought there were moments when they were building pressure where they continued to let Ireland off the hook. And there is just still so much, isn't there, for this side to work upon. I still think there are concerns if you want to look at someone like Mauro Toje, for example, who particularly in the first half gave away a couple of just really basic sloppy penalties. I thought Henry Arundel had a pretty quiet game, really. I think he didn't necessarily step up to the occasion in the way that a number of other players did. And it's not because he was a winger and wasn't getting front foot ball. I think you look at Anthony Watson, for example, and that was a, a measured, experienced performance from a guy who has been there and done it and still was, was very, very good. Also, after 27 minutes, if we want to go back to the stats, England have missed 15 tackles within half an hour of the game. So look, there are building blocks here for England. I still think Steve Borthwick is the man to get the most out of them. I give them huge credit for the way in which they responded and the way in which they just put in a performance after the, the performance they gave against France. But it is still another defeat. It's still another Six Nations where it's just a couple of wins for England. And you do feel like it is a, it's, a long, it's a long road to building back to where they're competing with the likes of Ireland and France. Because this Six Nations has taught us they're the best two teams in the Northern Hemisphere. Arguably the best two teams in the world. We shall wait and see. We'll see what happens with the All Blacks and, of course, the Springboks later this year at the World Cup. And even a new Australia team under Eddie Jones, who we know how much of an impact he can have when he first comes in to a team. But for now... It's congratulations to Ireland. I will do more content on the channel in the next few days talking about them. And for me, I think they're one of the best Grand Slam teams that I've seen ever in the Six Nations. I do think they are that good. Wasn't the best performance today, but they got the job done. And as for England, it's an improved performance. It's a gutsy performance. In a way, it's kind of similar to the defeat to Ireland at Twickenham a year ago, where they lost a man to a red card in the first half, played with guts, played with resilience, but still end up losing. This occasion may be a little bit different, the context of this game very, very different. Um, but yeah, where do you see these two teams? England still have a long way to go, as I say, still picking out those couple of moments, the discipline, some of the missed tackles. There are things within that game. Don't get too distracted by the red card. But having said that, the red card, I felt, was a little bit harsh. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video as well. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.